Hello everyone, this is, uh, I'm going to make a video sermon today. I've been on the series about numbers of the Bible. I've done one and I've done uh, the number, uh, the second one, and now number three. Uh, and that's the number that we're going to be talking about today. And I'm going to be in Ecclesiastes 9 through 12 in the King James Version of the Bible again. And it says... Two are better than one because they have a good reward for their labor. But if they fall, the one will lift up his fellow. But woe to him that is alone when he falleth, for he hath not another to help him up. Again, if two lie together, then they have heat. But how can one be warm alone? And if one prevail against, prevail against him, two shall withstand him. And a threefold cord is not quickly broken. Uh, Man, woman, and God, that's a three-fold cord, three cord, and it's not easily broken, not quickly broken. Uh, and, and also, besides a man and woman and God, there's also uh, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Uh, uh, the number three is used a bunch of times in the Bible. It it pictures completeness, though to a less, lesser degree than, than seven. The meaning of this number derives from the fact that it is the first of four spiritually perfect numerals. The other being 10, 7, 10, and 12. Before the flood, we had three righteous uh, patriarchs. We had Abel, Enoch, and Noah. After the flood, there was, we had righteous fathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, which later was renamed Israel. There are 27 books in the New Testament, which is three times three times three, or completeness, completeness to the third power. Jesus prayed three times in the Garden of Gethsemane before his arrest, trying to get his will in line with the Father's will. That's what we're doing when we pray. We're trying to get our will in line with the Father's will. We're not trying to approach him like he's Santa Claus. Uh, and he prayed three times to get his will in alignment with the Father. My goodness, if he had to pray three times, I just wonder sometimes how many times I need to pray before I can get over there where uh, I'm in alignment with the, with the Father. He was placed on the cross at the third hour of the day which is 9 a.m., and died at the ninth hour, 3 p.m. There were three hours of darkness that covered the land while, while Jesus was suffering on the cross from the sixth hour to the ninth hour. It's the number of resurrection. Christ was dead for three full days and three full nights, a total of 72 hours, I think, is the way it would compute out, being resurrected on Saturday just before sunset. There was three individuals who witnessed Jesus' transfiguration on the mount. Those who saw Jesus' glory on the mount were John, Peter, and James. The Apostle Paul was an exceptionally well-educated person. In three different occasions, he quotes directly from Greek poets. He also was privileged to visit the location of God's throne, which is in the third heaven. And he wrote as a, a epistle about it. And this is not very important, but uh, there are three words that appear only once in the scripture. One of reverend, eternity, and grandmother. And there were three people that was allowed to ask God for something. One was Solomon in 1 Kings 3, 5. It says, in Gibeon, the Lord appeared to Solomon in a dream by night. And God said, ask what shall I give thee? Ahaz in Isaiah 7, 11, more of the Lord spake unto Ahaz, saying, ask thee a sign of the Lord thy God. Ask it either in depth or in height above and in a course. Jesus Christ in Psalm 2, 8, and 9, Ask of me, and I shall give thee 
the heathen for thine inheritance, and the other most parts of the earth for thy possession. Thou shalt break them with a rod of iron. Thou shalt def dash them in pieces like a potter's vessel. The three gifts given to Israel by God were his law, the land of their inheritance, and their calling, the world to come. There's three angels mentioned, Michael, Gabriel, and Lucifer that was in heaven that fell. Next is seven. Three is the most commonly found a reference number in Revelations. An angel is charged to cry three woes to those that live on earth to warn them of more trials to come in Revelations 8, 13. The murdered bodies of two witnesses will not be allowed to be buried. Rather, will lie openly, will lie openly in Jerusalem for three days before they are resurrected. And I mentioned these two witnesses when I was doing the number two. Three unclean spirits will be allowed to deceive the whole world to fight the returning Jesus Christ in what is called the Battle of Armageddon. Revelation 16, 13 through 16 says, And I saw three unclean spirits like frogs come out of the mouth of the dragon, out of the mouth of the beast, and out of the mouth of the false prophets, for they are the spirits of devils working miracles, which go forth into the kings of the earth and the whole world to gather them to the battle of the great day of God Almighty, behold, I come as a thief. Blessed is he that watcheth and keepeth his garments, lest he walk naked and they see his shame. And he gathered them together in a place in the Hebrew tongue called Armageddon. The new Jerusalem, created by God for placement on New York, will be shaped like a square with three gates on each side. Revelation 21, 13 says, On the east three gates, on the north three gates, on the south, three gates, and on the west, three gates. God is described in the very beginning of the book as being which is, and which was, and which is to come, in Revelations 1, 4. There are three great periods of God's annual feast, days of worship. They are the spring festivals, Passover in the days of unleavened bread, the summer festival, Pentecost, and the fall festivals, the Feast of Trumpets, Atonement, and the Feast of Tabernacles. Man's system on earth is made up of three parts, economic, religious, and governmental, all of which are influenced and led by Satan. There was three crosses on on the on at Calvary, and there was Jesus and the two thieves on each side. Um, I know that we have to have two or three witnesses. He said, "Where two or three were gathered together in my name, that he would be in the midst of them." Um, we we've. Uh, We've, we've seen this now through the years. And uh, I, I love the numbers of the Bible. I, I just love numbers, period. Uh, I'll tell a, a short little testimony. Uh, I, it was before I ever knew anything about the Lord at all. I was 17 years old. I was out of high school, graduated early. And I went to Sears. It was down on Trailer Island in Huntsville. The parts department, and 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 in a parts department, this was appliance parts, but whatever. You you need to be you need to be sort of good with numbers, uh, because uh, and and I I've always had a, a a thing for numbers. I remember my mother, and daddy, and my relatives. They saw that I had a I could remember a birthday, and they would come around. I was about five years old, and they'd ask me. When's Aunt Sally's birthday? When's Uncle George's birthday? When, when's this and when's that? And I could answer them, and they was seemed like they were amazed about it. But uh, I went to take this test, and they gave me a, a battery of tests, personality, and other kind of tests at Sears. And 
One was a numbers test, and it had numbers written down, uh, a few numbers, and then it wanted you to, to say what the next number would be. They were in progressions, and they wasn't like 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. I mean, it was just all over the board. But I I just, whatever you call it, aced it. Uh, I was through in just a little bit, and I walked up and took it to the desk of the person that administered the test, and they was amazed. And so I guess they figured by that, that I was good with numbers and telephone numbers or whatever. Uh, it, it helps me in the scriptures most times because I can remember uh, where scripture's at. Not every scripture, but for the most part. And uh, so I've just always been gifted with numbers. And I guess that's what maybe triggered this to do this because I see significance in numbers wherever it is. Wherever it is. So I'm going to give you my phone number, 256-508-4410. And if you, you, if you call me, I might not get right back with you, but I'll get back with you as soon as I can. And if you don't mind, leave me a number. Comments are appreciated. Series suggestions or sermon suggestions are appreciated. I love you. I care about you. And until we see each other again, may God bless you.